still have two hours of work when I get home, and then I won't get to sleep. But I should have had a couple of martinis at dinner like I did. A couple of drinks won't do it. What I need is a long vacation. Well, did you get out to the Hamptons this weekend? Yes, and it was exhausting. My sister came up with her kids. Oh. We ran ourselves ragged all weekend trying to be good hosts. Oh. Anything happen in the birds? Well, you missed an interesting party at the Benson's. Interesting. Yeah. After midnight, we played Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare? Isn't that for kids? Well, this summer it's become the thing to do. They can be quite entertaining, too. Have you ever played? No. Not that I believe so. You want to hear how it goes? Only if absolutely necessary. <laughs> yeah. Well, someone challenges you with Truth or Dare. Now. If you pick truth, it, well, you have to tell the truth. And if you pick dare, well, they'll give you a dare. Something like, uh, like I dare you to run around the room naked three times. Yes, well, but our group weren't so much into dares as into the truth. That's because dares can get out of hand. That's because it's more of a kick to put someone in a position where they have to tell the truth. I don't buy it. What do you mean you don't buy it? I think most people would just make something up. Oh, but that's the thing. They don't. You're asked to tell the truth, and then something happens. You go with it. Besides, people can sense if you're lying. When you're asked a question, that's the challenge. The question begins the game. <coughs> Sounds like fun. Sorry I missed it. Must have been a barrel of laughs. The game begins when I ask you, Jeff, tell me your most sacred secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will I wait? <laughs> What, are we 15 years old? <laughs> okay. You want to play? Fuck. Here it is. Do you know Carlotta Gibson? Carlotta? Yeah, isn't she the, the, the brunette? Uh, her, her husband runs the jewelry store down at the mall. Yes, that's right. Yes, so? I kissed her. You kissed her? Yes, in the hallway of her home. Well, what were you doing there? At the beginning of the summer, her husband asked me to send him a prospectus on a group of funds. Since they only live a couple blocks away, I figured I'd drop it off. Oh, you devil! What happened? Carlotta answered the door. Her husband was at home. And the kids were at the club. <laughs> We started talking. She offered me a drink. I felt like she was coming on to me. And then, and then I kissed her. I've never done anything like that before. I've always played it straight. I haven't told anyone. <laughs> so, there it is. That's my secret. Well, not to worry, Jeff. Your secret's safe with me. That's the other part of the game. There's a code of honor. A code of honor. For how long? <laughs> For how long? Well, forever, Jeff. Forever. So, uh, do you think you'll go back to Carlotta's house? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It'll be easy. Yes. Easy. <laughs> Lou, tell me your most sacred secret. Oh, Jeff. Uh, I ask the question, the question begins the game. Maybe we should put this off until some other time. We'll be in Bedford soon. What's the matter, Lou? Chickening out on a little game of truth or dare. Oh, I see. You want to get your legs in? Oh, well, fine. Ask me again. Lou, tell me your most sacred secret. All right, here it is. 20 years ago, I killed someone. What? Are you pulling my leg? No joke. You asked, I told. 20 years ago? Who? I was in school. There was this kid, a little snivelly nosed pest. It was him. He was the one. The one I killed. You've had too many martinis. It's the truth. But, was it an accident? I don't think you could call it an accident. And at that moment, I wanted him dead. But, uh, how? It was June. 
a blister of a day. I was the editor of the school newspaper. I used to spend a great deal of time working on it. Go on. Well, this kid was, well, he was a leech. He used to come up to the office every day, hang around, and occasionally he'd do a little filing, but mostly he just came up there to bug me. Why? Who the hell knows why? Just the way he was, a little asshole. You have a huge forehead, you know that, Lou? <laughs> Your forehead's the size of Tennessee. Do people tell you that, Lou? What do they call you, Lou? Billboard, head, chrome dome? Is that what they call you, Lou? It's just the way it was, hacking at me day after day. Wasn't there some way to keep him out? Lock the door? There was no lock on the door. I told you this kid was a leech. So you popped him? It was about 4.30. Most everyone had gone home. I was sitting at my desk, dripping with sweat. It was so damn hot. All the windows in the place were open, and there sat this kid sitting on the windowsill with this dopey grin on his face. So, well, I got up from my desk. I walked over to him. I lifted his feet up and, and, and the office was on the fourth floor. <laughs> he, yeah, he went down like a rock. What did you do? Well, I gathered up my things. No one was around to see me. I hopped on a bus that happened to be standing on the corner and that was about it. Wasn't there an investigation? Well, yeah, I was called in. I mean, they knew I was the editor. They, they called me in and talked to me. Where did you tell them? Well, I told them I hadn't gone to the office that day because I was busy studying for tests. They didn't try to break your story down? I just kept repeating that I'd gone to class, I got on the bus, I went home, no one else was there. Did the question of suicide come up? Well, yes, but without a note. So they dropped the case? Well. Most everyone believed that it was an accident. But he'd been leaning out the window, got dizzy, lost his balance. He was a weird kid. Did it occur to you during the next week to call the police? What would have been the point of that? The point? <laughs> the point, Louis, is that you committed a crime. You took another life. You killed someone. Well, nothing I said or did would have brought it back. Well, no, but... Well, no, 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 wait a minute, Jack. Are you talking about recompense? Because I've suffered. I read Crime and Punishment. <laughs> I became obsessed with the character of Raskolnikov. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. You read Crime and Punishment, and you call that suffering. You haven't walked around in my skin. No, but I've walked around in your house. Come on, Lou, we're talking bed from here. Two acres only. Pretty wife, smart kids. Nothing I did would have made a difference. What about the boy's parents? Did you think of them? Christ, they never knew how or why their son died. Jesus! Why, no, 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 wait a minute, Jack! You want me to spend decades of my life in prison so that his parents can have a sense of resolution? For what? I've held a responsible job, kept a woman happy, raised three healthy kids. An eye for an eye? Is that the kind of justice you're suggesting, Jeff? Seems kind of barbaric, don't you think? Especially in a situation like this. I am not a bad person. Jeff, I have had to walk around with this secret for 20 years. Can you imagine what that's been like? You're here every day, Jeff, for 20 years. You're running through your mind every day. I doubt that there's been a day when I've been free of it. It's strange, but uh, you've managed to hide your distress rather well. <laughs> <laughs> One learns to be an actor under the circumstances in order to survive. For survival? Yes, to survive. I don't know. It's just that I, I'm not getting any feelings of remorse. Why do you think that is, Lou? I've had to learn to mask those feelings. No, that's not it. It's just not there. The guilt, the tormented conscience. I would think anyone who had committed such a hideous act would be racked with guilt, would be cracked. I've been tormented in my own way. Oh, give me a break. Well, you're a hard-ass son of a bitch, you know that? Maybe, but it seems to me like you've gotten off scot-free these last 20 years. And that bothers you. What bothers me is to think that a person, a person I know, 
could take another human life and not feel anything except discomfort for oneself. Well, don't let it bother you, Jet. If you can't feel my pain, then maybe it's your problem. Let's just forget about the whole thing. Forget it! <laughs> you dumped this damn 20-year-old secret in my lap. What the hell am I supposed to do with it? Do. There's confidentiality at stake here, Jet. <laughs> Don't worry, Lou. Your secret is safe with me. I accept the code. Because you're such an ethical kind of guy. You better believe it.